the hot and techy brasa, the city bird SUV. Lucknow have lost once in four outings. Delhi have won once in five outings. Will the fortunes change for the capitals as they make the trip to Lucknow to face LSG in their own den where Lucknow are two for two so far this season? On Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick and Four Timeout. We're joined by Tom Moody, Mitch McLennigan and Deep Das Gupta to preview that game. Let's start with Delhi. And Mitch, the bowling, needless to say, is quite a cause for concern. 270 and 230 is what they've conceded in the last few games. Mm -hmm. And what's particularly hurting them is Andrik Nokia has not quite landed. No, he hasn't quite landed. He obviously arrived to the tournament late and um, after the birth of his child, I, I believe. So uh, quite a big event and then come in and to be straight into the thick of it, uh, bowling the last over more often than not in the games that he has played is, is probably, it's probably, <laughs> if, if you're just short of a strike, it's probably not what you want to do. And particularly the last game against Mumbai, uh, they, they used the resources of Jai Richardson early. They used the resources of Kuldeep early. And uh, Nokia was left with bowling the 18th and the 20th over, which at Wonkiri, at any ground, is a difficult ask, but particularly at Wonkiri against the power that Mumbai possess. So I, I think it's if you want to get the best out of Andre Nokia, and he's, he's your number one seamer in that lineup, right? You need to get him back into some form. You can't have him bowling 18 and 20. Yep. Out of those last four overs, yep, maybe you can bowl two of them. You might bowl 17 and 20 or 17 probably 17 and 20 if you need them to, but you need to be able to cycle those last four overs around um, everyone else. So maybe he just bowls one. I, I see him as well, and you might agree with this, Tom, but I see him more of as like a, a two or three over in the power play, uh, one in the middle, one at the death uh, type of bowler, as opposed to the way they're using him, one, uh, two up front and two at the end. If they are to use more overs of Nokia through the power play and through the middle, how do you then re reassess the other bowlers, especially if Mukesh Kumar continues to stay absent? I think it's just shared responsibility. Everyone, everyone, you know, carries someone else's load. You know, it's, it's not a case of, you know, you're isolated and that's, you know, you're the only one that can play that role. Uh, Khalil can bowl one of the overs at the end. Mm -hmm. He's been brilliant in the power play and I'm sure they want to continue to bowl two, if not three, in that phase, uh, given his, you know, impact that he's had at that phase. Uh, Jai Richardson has got the skills to bowl at the end. So the way I see it is that what they need to do is just all take one mm -hmm. um, and just share that responsibility. And that also creates a point of difference too because, you know, you're from a batting perspective, you're getting a different type of bowler that you're having to line up every single uh, over against sort of seeing someone in the 18th over and then seeing them again yeah. in the 20th over. So, you know, at that time, particularly if you get a set batter in, that second over, more often than not, can go where, you know, not your way. I think more than anything else, uh, uh, it's, it's important for Rishabh to use him wisely. Like you said, if there is an early wicket or whatever, you get him in comparatively easier overs to kind of for him to settle down because it seems obviously he's rusty. And on top of that, loan confidence with what has happened of late. So try and kind of ease him in a bit in this game and use him a little. Uh, and, and obviously, like both of them said, uh, you know, get maybe Khalil to bowl and over, Jai Richardson to bowl overs there and kind of uh, ease his workload a bit. Let's turn our attention to the Lucknow Super Giants, who after losing their first game of the season have won three in a row, including two at home and uh, contrasting scores in their two home games. Defended 199 comfortably against Punjab and then defended 160 also quite comfortably against Gujarat. They do love defending at home. If mm. you come up against that, how are you trying to position yourselves as the opposition? Uh, well, well, you'd get them in a position where they're not defending uh, to start with. Um, but again, uh, that's the, the, the real unknown for even the home team at Lucknow is that, you know, what is the surface going to dish up and how do we need to adjust our game style to complement what's in front of us? Um, and I think teams have done that poorly uh, when they've gone to Lucknow. Um, so I think that would be pretty much central to team discussions or individual discussions for teams visiting Lucknow is making sure that one, you know, quickly make those assessments on how the surface is playing from a batting and a bowling perspective, communicate that through the group and play accordingly and get either a competitive total or make sure you're in the game in, a, in a ch any sort of chase situation. If you look at their batting, there have been scores for pretty much everyone in the top five or six, barring Devdat Padikal, who's had a yeah. slow start to life here. 
Yeah. Uh, would you consider shaking up the order? Would you send Nicholas Puran higher up? Wouldn't shake up the order as such, but I wouldn't mind seeing someone like Ayush Badoni, who is a middle order, proper middle order batter, to kind of go up uh, and maybe bat at three. And maybe they've uh, just give him a break. It's been four games, and he he has not looked like he's you you know what I'm saying. He has not batted enough balls, or he hasn't. It's it didn't seem like he. Is short on runs. He's just short on confidence and maybe even a little bit of form as well. So, wouldn't mind seeing someone like Badoni up the order. You still stick with that. I know the big question is what is the right position for someone like Puran. But what he does really, really well, Nicholas Puran, is wherever he bats, it's hit boundaries. Whether it's in the middle overs, it's in the death. So, how you want to use him? Obviously, there are quite a few left handers, not enough right handers. So, you want to use that left hand, right hand combination as well. But I would ideally like to see someone like Badoni up the order and get someone like Prerak uh, at number five, six, and work that out a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Just it's this. a tough one, isn't it? Um, DDP struggled at the start, mm. but he's also going to be a key, key component to them as the season yeah. goes on. If he can regain some of the form we've seen mm. in the past when he was playing for um, RCB, Archie. you know, if he can get yeah. that, you can get the best out of him, and he becomes a really important part of that cog. Um, mm. He's obviously got the benefit of being left-handed as well, so if Quinton mm. gets out early, he can come in. Uh, you talk about Bodoni, mm. and you want to see more out of him. Uh, it's really difficult to find players who can go at a good strike rate towards the end. And mm. What he did in the last game, 20 off 11, with Nicholas Porin, got, got them to a position where they actually got a total on the board which they could defend, and I reckon he'll take a lot of confidence from that 20 off 11 coming out and doing that job um, to, 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 to then move him up the order after a performance like that in that position because it's a confidence position, mm. right? He batted three in the first game and, and mm. it didn't work out for him. Yeah, yeah well. just one. Yeah, one off. Yeah, yeah. one off. Yeah. 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 So I just think it's just like six, six is a confidence position mm. and the, the combination with your other hitter at the end there is very important as well. And for Nicholas Poran to see what he did in that game, 20 off 11, will give Nicholas Poran some confidence when he's on strike. And I think that partnership is almost as important as your opening partnership when it comes to T20. Yeah. The other important thing when you look at that batting order, they've got really good batters still seven, and then the drop is quite drastic. So from Krunal Pandya, maybe, uh, I don't know what the batting order is going to be, let's say Krunal at seven, and then Bishnoi at eight. Mm. So generally, if you look at across all the teams, your number eight is a good enough batter. But then from Krunal, so I don't know, that's, that's the tricky bit, I guess, that they need to kind of navigate. Your final thought on Puran's batting position, more in terms of the entry point, not so much the position yeah. with a batter in that kind of form. Do you want to have him facing more balls? Oh, look, he, he's always been in form, so it's not a case <laughs> of uh, Puran in form. <laughs> that seems to go hand in hand. I, I, I'd be uh, getting him in post power play. Um, sort of around about that seventh, eighth over, because um, that's where you can really maximise. Um, and just my uh, ten cents on particle, I'd, I'd persevere with them, and that's the luxury of winning. Uh, because luck now winning, I think they've got the luxury to persevere mm. and get the returns from him at the back half of the tournament. All right, luck now don't lose much at home. Can Delhi change that? If Delhi don't, it'll be one win out of six. New hot and techy breast up, the city bird SUV.